Entrance to the paintball court costs $5, and paintballs are paid for separately. A ticket for entrance with five balls, for example, costs $8. So let's define some variables here. Let's let, let's let P equal the price that I'm paying for admission and the balls. And let's let B equal the number of balls. Number of balls. And we know that the price is going to be a function of the number of balls. We can make a little table here. So let's make a table where for a given number of balls, let's figure out what the price is going to be. So let's just start at zero balls. If we have zero balls, we have to pay just to get into the paintball court, and that costs us $5. Now they tell us a ticket for entrance with five balls, so now we have entrance and five balls. This is going to cost $8. And they tell, so let's think about what the incremental price per ball is here. And we're going to assume that the price per ball is constant after you pay for admissions, after you pay this first $5. So what's the price per ball? Well, when our number of balls increase by five, our price increases by $3, by $3, so plus three. So we could say our change in price over the change in the number of balls is equal to, our change in price is $3 when our change in the balls are $5. So this right over here, this could also, you could view this as your unit price per ball, your unit rate of change of price per ball. This is going to be 60 cents per ball, 60 cents per ball. So let's think about constructing an equation that represents how much we will pay as a function of balls. So we could write, and we could write it in function notation if we like, we could write price as a function of balls is going to be equal to, well, you're gonna start off just paying $5 just for getting into the place. You're gonna start off getting $5, and then you're gonna pay more depending on the number of balls you get. And you're gonna pay 60%, 60 cents per ball. You see that right over here. When you got five balls, you paid $3. $3 for five balls is the same thing as 60 cents per ball. So you're then gonna pay 60 cents 60 cents per ball after that. So this right over here is the equation that represents, or that's a way of defining price as a function of balls, and we can also try to graph it. So let's do that. So let's actually try to graph it as well. So let's, that's our price axis, our vertical axis, and let's say this is our, the number of balls axis. So this is balls, and this is price as a function, as a function of balls. So when the balls are zero, when the balls are, let me do this in a color I haven't used yet. When the balls are zero, the price we've already seen is five. The price, and I'll make this, this let's say this is five, this is 10, this is 15. So when, the, when, the, when we have zero balls, we're gonna pay five. And then when you see when we have five balls, so let's say that this is five right over here. When you have five balls, we paid eight dollars, which gets us right around here. And two points define a line, so this function you could is a linear function and it would look something something like this. And if you ask what is the slope of this line? Well the slope is the rate of change of the vertical axis with respect to the horizontal axis. So what is that? So when the horizontal axis, and we've just frankly we've already calculated this, when the horizontal axis changed by five, when your change in B is equal to five, your vertical axis, your vertical axis, so your vertical axis so your change in price was equal to three. So your change in price over your change in the number of balls, which would be the change in the vertical axis over the change in the horizontal axis, which is the definition of slope. It's a way of defining the inclination of this line. That is going to be equal to three over five. Three over five. Three over five which is exactly what we calculated right over here, just thinking about it in a slightly different way. Now, we've thought about this in multiple ways. Let's actually try to answer their questions. Let's figure out which of these actually apply. So the first is that the relationship is proportional. So if we had a proportional relationship between the two, this function would look like this. It would be P is equal to some constant times the number of balls. And by definition, in a proportional relationship, in a proportional relationship, when your number of balls is zero, your, your price would be zero. And that's not the scenario we have here. When your balls are zero, you're still paying $5. So this, this is not, this is not a proportional relationship. Next question, the next statement. Entrance with 10 balls costs $16. Well, we could test that out. When B equals 10, so the price for 10 balls is going to be equal to five plus 0 0.60 times 10. 
Well, this is 5 plus 6, which is equal to 11, not 10. So this isn't right either. When the number of balls increases by 11, the price increases by $6.60. So remember, the change in price over the change in the number of balls is going to be equal to, let me get a right good color here. So let me write it here. The change in price over the change in the number of balls is always going to be equal to 3 fifths. And so they say this is going, the, the number of balls increases by 11. So 3 fifths is equal to what over 11? So let's think about that a little bit. So 3 fifths is equal to, well, let's write it this way. 3 fifths is the same thing as 0.6. So let me write this. 0 0.6 is equal to the price change over 11. I'll just write that as a question mark. As a question mark over 11, you multiply both sides by 11, you get 6.6 .6 is equal to question mark. So this is absolutely true. The price increases by $6.60 when the number of balls increases by 11. So this one right over here is absolutely true. And then finally, when the x-axis represents the number of paint balls, the slope of the graph of the relationship is 5 thirds. Well, here we did represent the x-axis as the number of paint balls, or the horizontal axis as the number of paint balls, but our slope wasn't 5 thirds, it was 3 fifths. So this last statement is absolutely not right. So this is the only one that we can say applies.